In 1980, FC Groningen would sub in at halftime a 17-year-old defender who at the time would be the third youngest ever player to take part in a match for the club. In his first season at the struggling club, he would only taste victory five times despite taking part in 24 matches. But even as the club struggled to dominate any match, the young defender would show himself to be an oddly gifted goal scorer, finding the net six times in his first season. By the end of the season, FC Groningen would only keep themselves above the relegation spots on goal difference, finishing with only the same measly 25 points as NEC. The next season, Ronald Coleman would be one of the names that would endorse the revolution for FC Groningen, as he would turn into a frequent starter and would get himself an astonishing 14 goals in a season. Keep in mind, we're talking about a centre-back. The next season he would repeat this goal-scoring achievement, recording the same 14 goals in a season, but this time the team would profit even more from it, managing a 5th place finish and earning themselves a spot in the UEFA Cup. These phenomenal performances would not only earn him uh, his international debut for the Netherlands national team, as well as a transfer to the title holders Ajax. His time at Ajax would follow the same path with exceptional goal-scoring prowess and a constant fight to earn domestic recognition, only reaping its profits in the second season as Ajax would top the table with 54 points thanks not only to Coleman but also Dutch talents like Marco van Basten and Frank Rijkaard. After the third season with Johan Cruyff coaching the team, Coleman, who had for long lusted over the potential European success, would controversially leave for rivals PSV as they lured him with hopes of fulfilling those same dreams. At PSV, Coleman would experience what would be the peak of his goal scoring. So far, the defender would be phenomenal, averaging nearly a goal every three matches, which is just something that is even hard to process. I, as someone who wasn't that familiar with his career, had to not double but triple check these numbers in order to believe them. Okay, trying not to go on a tangent, at PSV, he would overall average a goal every two matches over the three seasons he stayed there. Just listen carefully, the man got 61 goals in three seasons for PSV as a centre-back. 26 in only his second season. That's more than Ronaldinho ever achieved. Well, to be fair, it's actually the exact same, but on Ronaldinho's peak, 10 of his goals were penalties, which is three more than common. Well, I think you get the point, this man was an absolute abomination of a defender. Well, his first season at PSV would start really poorly as PSV would get knocked out of the European Cup in the first round and would be trailing behind Ajax in the second place for months and it looked like Coleman had made the worst decision possible in leaving Ajax for PSV. Whereas the board replaced the current coach for Gus Edink, PSV would come back to win the title and once again qualify for the European Cup. The next season could arguably be deemed as common speak, both for the already mentioned 26 goals but also as he finally achieved his dream. First, PSV would defeat Galatasaray and Rapid Vienne with ease as they made it to the quarterfinals. The difficulty would increase as they struggled to get past Bordeaux, winning on away goals. Then, as they faced Real Madrid, another tough match would take place having the exact same outcome as this would be the path taken by Coleman towards his first Champions League final where he would face Benfica and after 120 minutes completely goalless and 12 penalties taken with Coleman converting the first one of those Benfica's Veloz would miss and Coleman would have conquered Europe and fulfilled his biggest wish. To add to his massive achievement, PSV would also win both the league and the cup to complete the treble. As this would not satisfy Coleman, he would also take part in the Euro for the first time in his career that summer. Then by two goals, and just like that, Coleman would have won every competition he took part on that season, both at club and international level, which would earn him a fifth place in the Ballon d'Or, only six points off the podium. Truly incredible. In the following season, Coleman would revalidate all titles but the Champions League, as he would go on to get his first international move to Barcelona, where he would reunite with his former manager and Dutch superstar Johan Cruyff, as he assembled what would be known as the Dream Team. The first season there would be the worst, only winning the Copa del Rey despite scoring in the final of the European Cup Winners' Cup. But after that, it would take a complete turn, with the club managing to win the league for four years in a row, with the main achievement coming in 1990 
2022 as Barcelona would easily make it through the qualifying rounds. Coming into the group stage, they would win all home games, which despite an away loss to Spartak Prague and a draw to Benfica would be enough to see them get to the final, where, as they faced Sampdoria, a single goal and extra time by none other than Coleman himself would see Barcelona be crowned champions of Europe. Before leaving Barcelona, Coleman would have one last Euro, and it would of course come in the competition he seemed to love the most, the Champions League. This time in the 1994 edition, Barcelona would easily qualify to the group stage with Coleman scoring an incredible two goals against Dinamo Kiev, as well as another two against Austria Vienne. Then they would easily top their group, not losing a single match, with Coleman being impressive in form and getting two goals versus Spartak and one against Galatasaray. Then, as they went on to the semi-final, Coleman would score another one in their 3-0 win over FC Porto, with eight goals in 11 matches while playing at centre-back. Coleman had been a titan for Barcelona that season, but the final would end this fairy tale on a sour note as AC Milan would trash Barcelona 4-0. After one rather unsuccessful season at Barcelona, Coleman would leave for Feyenoord, where he would get close to the title but never actually achieve it over the two seasons he spent there. Regardless, this transfer made him one of the few players to play for all three big Dutch clubs and by the end of his career he would have netted a total of 250 goals over 759 matches, becoming the most prolific centre-back of all time. When you hear about a goal-scoring centre-back, you probably think of Sergio Ramos, but just to compare the two, Ramos just had his most prolific season with 13 goals. On Coleman's best, he got twice that amount while playing roughly the same amount of matches. His 250 career goals are higher than players like Wesley Schneider, Frank Ribery, Alexi Sanchez, Arjen Robben or even Zinedine Zidane, and a higher club record than Ballon d'Or winning striker Michael Owen. And if that's not surprising enough, if you take into account the game played, he even had a higher goals per game ratio than Fernando Torres and the same as Ronaldinho himself. Absolutely legendary. Known as, and I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, Floquet de No, or Snowflake in English, after an albino gorilla that lived in the Barcelona Zoo at the time, Ronald Koeman was a one-of-a-kind footballer, just a unique opportunity for those who had the pleasure to watch him at his peak. What more could be asked of a centre-back when he even manages to score that much? If he contributed any more to the team's play, he would have to get a pair of gloves and just start stopping some shots here and there. We're talking about a man who has a gesture of revolt against the war crimes committed by the Germans in the Second World War, took a match against Germany in their home soil as an opportunity to exchange shirts with one of their players, only to purposely wipe his rear to the shirt on live TV. Before we get on with the video, I'd like to mention that he had a relatively successful coaching career with clubs like Benfica, PSV, etc. and even at a point a Dutch national team, which becomes even more impressive when he realized that his brother, Erwin Koeman, who was also a football player turned coach, was coaching the Oman national team at the time, making them the only ever set of brothers to coach two national teams at the same time. Odd, but really impressive. So, getting into our ranking system now, first, marking, Coleman was very solid, an 8 out of 10, secondly, tackling, probably his best defensive attributes, a 9 out of 10, third, physicality, he had a very imposing physique, so an 8, like he was a very focused and determined individual, so a 7 out of 10. In terms of his legacy, first consistency, he was amazing on all stages of his career, an 8 out of 10. Secondly, Flair, a composed goal-scoring defender, sure is hard to evaluate, but I'd say an 8 out of 10 should be right. Then his trophy cabinet, it is pretty good indeed, so an 8 out of 10. Then longevity, not really the longest career, though he never really fell off much, so a 7 out of 10. Lastly, the icon factor is sort of a forgotten gem, it feels like only Dutch people or Barcelona fans remember him very well, the rest of the world seems sort of numb to his prior achievements, so I can only give him a 5 out of 10. This totals out to 78 out of 100, a very solid score for a very solid player. He doesn't really lack in any aspect, but I guess he just doesn't enjoy the notoriety of some other players. Let's hope this video will change that a little bit. So, this was Ronald Koeman's career in a video. 
I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're new. There's always new videos coming out each week. So yeah, this is it. See you next time.